What is personalized medicine? Personalized medicine describes any medical practice that is tailored to you based on personal factors such as your family history, race, or weight. A growing area of personalized medicine is genome-informed medicine. This type of care factors in your genetic information when managing your health. Currently, medicine is usually practiced with a one-size-fits-all approach involving a trial and error process when prescribing medications. In the near future, Genome Informs Medicine will allow medical professionals to tailor treatments so the right medication is given to the right patient at the right dose at the right time. It will also allow individuals to take preventative steps which may avoid or delay the development of certain diseases. You may wonder how this is possible. The first breakthrough came in 2003 with the understanding of the human genome sequence, the order of human genes. The human genome is made up of four chemical letters, A, C, T, and G, in the familiar double helix structure. When you string enough of these letters together, you make a gene, and many genes strung together form a chromosome. Humans have 23 pairs of chromosomes, 46 in total, and altogether they form your genome. Your genome is the hereditary information you received from your biological parents. Half of the information was inherited from your mother and the other half from your father. Once scientists were able to sequence the human genome, additional research led scientists to uncover how much one person's genome differs from the next. Surprisingly, everyone's DNA is more than 99% identical. This means your family, your friends, your neighbors, everyone in this world is more than 99% identical with regard to their genome sequence. Yet, we each have our own unique less than 1% which influences how we look, how we behave, how we will react to different prescription medications, as well as our likelihood of developing certain serious diseases. Research studies are now trying to determine how these small genetic differences can be used to improve our health. These small genetic differences are present in the form of SNPs. The term SNP stands for single nucleotide polymorphism. This is simply the scientific phrase which describes the sites in our genome where we commonly differ from one another. You can think of SNPs as spelling changes in the ACTG pattern of chemical letters. We will use this SNP to illustrate the potential use in health management. This example represents a small section of the human genome, a section of one of the genes involved in heart function. Let's compare the genomes of five individuals from around the world at this site of variation. About 95% of the population has an A at this site in the genome, and the remaining 5% have a T. The majority of the population with an A at this specific site in the genome has no health impact. However, the 5% of the population that has a T at this specific site is at an increased risk for an early heart attack. The T prevents the gene from functioning properly and as a result increases the genetic risk of heart attack. It is important to point out that this is not a diagnosis. This does not represent total risk. This increase in risk is based only on this one site of variation in the genome. Whereas heart disease is a complex disease with multiple factors that determine whether a person will develop the disease. This increased risk is one piece of the puzzle. This one genetic factor combines with variants in other genes, as well as with family history risk, lifestyle, and environmental components to determine whether a person will actually develop heart disease. Although this one site in the genome does not diagnose a heart attack, nor prevent one from happening, it may be useful in managing one's health. Research studies to determine the use of knowing one's risk are needed in order to establish potential benefits. As we have illustrated, scientific discoveries on the human genome and sites within the DNA where people vary, plus the connections between DNA and disease risk and medication breakdown makes it possible for us to use genome information in medical care. Identifying an individual's sites of variation is now possible. It's quite comprehensive and affordable. Shown here are the Affymetrix 6.0 human gene chip and the DMET Plus drug metabolism chip. Analysis can be done using these gene chips to determine the less than 1% of DNA 
that makes an individual unique. The center squares on these chips are silicone wafers containing millions of short DNA sequences. An individual's DNA is injected into the chip and binds to the DNA sequences on the wafer. Using fluorescent dyes and laser scanners, a laboratory team can translate this information into an individual's personal SNP profile, an analysis of the less than 1% that makes that individual unique. The tools are available to incorporate genome information into health management. The question now is, will it be useful? We know that there is the potential to personalize drug selection and dosing, so treatments can be more effective and cause fewer side effects. Potential also exists for genetic information to lead to personalized disease screening, as well as for more effectively organized clinical trials for drug development. All of this based on information gained by genome analysis. What is needed now are research studies to understand the use of genetic information in our healthcare and to determine best practices for the field of personalized medicine. To further illustrate the potential of genome-informed medicine to prevent unfavorable or adverse drug reactions is a story published in the Wall Street Journal in 2007. Karen Schmale, a 49-year-old woman living in St. Louis, found herself gasping for air one day. She was rushed to the hospitals where doctor found a blood clot in her lungs. They prescribed a very common blood thinning drug called warfarin, which worked very well. She was able to breathe again, was discharged, and went home. But a week later, Karen was too weak to walk and noticed blood in her urine. She was rushed back to the hospital for an emergency blood transfusion. She also had a genetic test specific for warfarin dosing performed at this time. It turns out that Karen has a SNP, a spelling change in her genes, that causes her body to break down the drug much slower than most people. Since her body cannot process the drug quickly enough, it builds up to the toxic level in her system. Karen Schmale is hypersensitive to the drug warfarin due to a genetic variant in her genome. If Karen and the medical professionals caring for her knew of this prior to prescribing the drug, they could have tailored her warfarin dose to reflect her individual needs. You might wonder if this unfavorable or adverse drug reaction is rare. The answer is no. There are approximately 2 million prescriptions for warfarin written each year in the United States. It is estimated that 1-2% to of the population has the same genetic variant as Karen and would experience a similar adverse drug reaction. Karen and the 1-2% to 2 of the population who share this genetic variant can actually take warfarin safely, but at a dose that allows the body to break it down or metabolize it without buildup. In August 2007, for the first time in history, the FDA changed the label on the drug, stating that one size does not fit all. The FDA now encourages hospitals to test for this genetic variant prior to dosing because the proper dose really does depend on an individual's personal genome. Considering that 6% of all hospitalizations are due to adverse drug reactions, and that we now have tools such as the DMET Plus drug metabolism chip that can identify genetic variants that may cause an adverse drug reaction, the potential to ultimately lower costs and improve outcomes using genome information is profound. Now what about disease prevention? With genome informed medicine, there is potential to screen for diseases and hopefully intervene at earlier stages, or even prevent the disease altogether. In this case, we have Jamil, who was at his regular annual checkup with his physician, a doctor who was recently educated on the field of genome informed medicine. His physician, knowing Jamil has a strong family history of coronary artery disease, suggested he undergo genetic testing to look at sites of variation in his genome. As it turns out, Jamil is at an increased risk for coronary artery disease due to his own genetic profile. It was explained to Jamil that diseases such as coronary artery disease are caused by multiple factors, genetic and non-genetic factors. And although he cannot change his genetics, he does have control over his lifestyle and he can reduce the risk of coronary artery disease by quitting smoking, which he did with the help of his doctor. He also learned that having diabetes increases one's risk for coronary artery disease. His doctor had always told him to watch his weight and diet to prevent diabetes.
It now hit home that by doing so, by exercising and eating better, he could lower his risk for diabetes and consequently his risk for coronary artery disease. These stories illustrate the potential use of genome-informed medicine. What are needed now are research studies to examine the use of genome-informed medicine and determine the best practices for the field.